So welcome everybody to Take Note, the place to make the most of your non-ordinary transcendent experiences. And today, we're incredibly lucky to have with us Dr. Penny Sartori, who um, teaches over at Swansea University, was, was, still is. Are you still practicing as a nurse as well, or? Oh, not anymore. Not no, anymore, I, I... so was an intensive care nurse uh, for 17 years and is now very busily moving around the world uh, speaking on near-death experiences and uh, as a world-renowned expert we are incredibly pleased to have here her time uh, to share with us um, the books that have come out and the understandings uh, on NDEs and uh, why don't we just jump straight in. So, Penny, thank you. Um, I've just been diving deep into your most recent book, The Transformative Power of Near-Death Experiences, How the Messages of NDEs Positively Impact the World. Um, and I've got to say, I've, I, I, I've just been thoroughly enjoying the, the stories, you know. There's nothing quite like reading people's stories and it takes you immediately there. Um, yeah, would you, would you like to tell us about the book and how it came about? And I was very interested in, you know, your background as a nurse and now here with the NDEs. So, yeah. Well, basically, um, after my research into near-death experiences, I published um, my second book called The Wisdom of Near-Death Experiences in 2014. And at the time, I was heavily pregnant with my son, and it got serialized in a national newspaper. So I was getting thousands and thousands of emails, and it was like a full time job replying to them. And then it was in May time, and at the end of May, and I thought, right, I've got to have a break now and focus on the pregnancy because I'm going to give birth soon. So I decided I couldn't respond to any emails until after the birth. Uh, and as soon as I made that conscious decision, I had an email and it came through straight away. And I thought, oh, gosh, I've just got to reply to this one. Mm -hmm. And it was from a lady called Kelly Walsh. And it was only two or three lines, didn't say much at all. But I intuitively knew I should contact this lady. So I did. And we arranged to have a chat the next day. And Kelly had, was trying to understand her experience of what happened to her. And it occurred... Uh, following a suicide attempt and this experience of hers actually completely transformed her life and it took away the lifelong anxiety and depression and fear that she'd been feeling prior to that and it turned it into something completely the opposite and she now calls herself positivity princess hmm. and set up this cartoon character called uh, Positivity Princess and it's all about empowering young children from a young age so that they care for each other rather, rather than bullying and uh, I just really engaged with Kelly I loved her idea and we kept in contact and she said look we should do another book on this we should write a book together and that's how the book came about really um, we had to delay it because Kelly had a um, some family problems um, so we delayed it for a while but it was all kind of perfect timing as well you know and as we were writing that book there was just this flow of little synchronicities all the time it was just incredible one synchronicity after another and uh, Kelly can describe her synchronicities better than I can because they were really completely off the page you know they were really unbelievable um, and so we wrote this book and what it is it's a, a collaboration of lots of different people's experiences and then not only just about their experience but how that experience changed them mm -hmm. because I, you know when I was doing my PhD I was looking for possible explanations for near-death experiences but what I think we're missing but with all the debate about near-death experiences are the very important messages that they have for everyone else and that's what I wanted to get across with this book yes. how people can be so positively transformed when they've had this experience and you know a lot of people would say 
Well, anyone who comes close to death is going to think differently if they survive, you know, and their life is going to be changed in some way. And yes, that's true. Um, and there was an interesting research study published back in 1998 by um, Growth Marnet and Summers, who showed um, they compared groups of people who had survived a close brush with death but didn't have the near-death experience and those who had a near-death experience and the conclusion of the study was that it was the near-death experience itself that had instigated the changes in them so it's a very powerful thing to have these transcendent experiences and um, so this book really is co a collaboration with people who have very kindly shared their stories and it shows how they were transformed mm. and the thing Ellie wanted to do with this book as well is to for all of the proceeding all of the royalties to go to the charity that she set up which is going to benefit children all around the world as well so I think you know it was a love care was share foundation was it right yeah yeah could could you tell so us a Kelly bit about the work that they do yeah, well, it's a new foundation and what Kelly hopes to do is to raise funds and then we are going to connect with lots of different groups all over the world. So if there's any charities who are in need of small donations to improve what they're, the projects they're working on, those are the sort of things that we're going to be funding with with the money from the foundation as well and that was the, the good thing about Kelly as well you know when I first connected with her she's got this business mind and she had patented Positivity Princess so she's patented the, the logo she's got a logo she's got everything and you know this kind of thing could really make millions and millions of dollars for her but she doesn't she knows it's going to make millions of dollars but she it's not about for herself mm -hmm. it's about for doing good in the world and that's what the foundation is about so it can be self-sustaining and that we can do good with this money as well so you know that's something that I, I that very much resonates with me and which is why I love working with Kelly because she's such an inspirational person and that really struck me with Kelly's story and the, the stories in the book as, as one of the themes, it really, you know, as, as a result of near-death experiences and other STEs, this compelling feeling to then carry out some kind of purposeful work in the world. Um, one story that moved me particularly was the guy and the bees um, in, in the book where that wasn't, it wasn't part of his awareness in any way beforehand, but as a result of his transformation, he got so deeply involved with the bees and understanding how important bees are on the planet and as a hive keeper. And it's, it's become completely what he does now. Yes, absolutely, you know, and again, that is something that he's working with universities to develop that further. So that's going to have huge impact on on the environment as well, you know. So you have all of these different people coming together, all being of service in the world in some way or other. And I just find everyone so inspirational, you know, and then we've got um, Gigi Strayler. And I can remember when Gigi first contacted me, you know, she was really struggling trying to understand her near-death experience and we exchanged emails for a while and then she said right I need to go away and think about this I'll come back to you and it was about 18 months before she came back to me and she'd had some psychotherapy in between and then she had a deeper understanding of it and was able to integrate it more into her life and then she said, I really recognise this need for support because we haven't got anything in the UK. And so she set up now NDE UK, which is a support group. And at the moment it's based in London, but she hopes to have little satellite groups all across the UK so that there are people in different regions who would be able to get support. And then she's going to link different therapists who specialize with near, in near death experiences. So then people can go to that as a resource to see what sort of therapy they think would benefit them the most, you know? Excellent, excellent. I love how we seem to be at a time on the planet where people are becoming more comfortable in sharing their experiences. And it's mixed with what seems to be more people having experiences 
as well as the technology now where we can reach like just as we're doing now from Australia to, to the UK, having, being able to have these conversations to connect the threads. Yes, absolutely. And I think what we're seeing now is that global awakening. I think there's going to be a massive shift in our consciousness in general, really, and that's going to be on a global scale. And we're seeing it more and more because people are able to share their stories now. And whereas, you know, we've got the internet and, you know, we've got these connections now that we didn't have, say, 20 years ago. And I've noticed a difference since I started researching near-death experiences. That started back in 1994. And I was really struggling to find people who would share their experiences with me, you know. Some people would say, oh, well, my auntie had a near-death experience. And I said, well, can you ask her if she'll have a chat with me? So she'd get back to me and say, oh, no, she's a, oh, she doesn't want to talk about it. And then gradually through word of mouth, people started to realise that I was serious in, about these experiences. And every now and again, people would share their experience. Then I started my hospital research and I came across more people there who'd had the experience. And then I finished my PhD in 2005. And a year later, there was an article in a, a national newspaper and they'd put my email address on there. And immediately, I think I had about 600 emails as a result of that. Wow. And then and further down the line, in 2014, when my book was serialized in um, the other national newspaper, it went sort of viral. I couldn't believe it. You know, in the morning, by about nine o'clock in the morning, online, there were about 300 comments. And then by the evening, there were over 1,200 comments. And then I just started getting this real big flow of emails. And at the moment, I've got about 14,320 emails that I've yet to respond to. I just haven't had <laughs> Thanks for answering mine. <laughs> wow. That's why I'm really slow with emails because I just get so many of them. So I'm trying to set up a way that I can respond to them as well. And I'm, I'm looking at doing online courses as well because a lot of people contact me looking for help. And so because I've got so many, trying to respond to each email individually it's just not practical. So what I'm going to do now is devise like an online course that people could go to to help them understand their experience. Beautiful. So that's something for the future. Beautiful. Yeah. Keep, keep us posted on that resource, please. Okay. Yeah. We'll do. You know, the image I get as you're, as you're describing what happened there is, is the cap has come off and this spillage of stories and people wanting to express has occurred over in that particular part of the world. Um, and it, it's, it's one indicator of, I mean, we're living on a whole planet where this spillover seems to be happening. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I, th I just think we're living in a really exciting time now because... I can just see these great changes about to happen. They, they, I can feel them. They, they're tangible now, you know? Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's great. I guess it's, it's not as lonely anymore to, to put the feelers out. And, yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, for years, people have been kind of, when I first started my research, no one understood it. They were like, oh, Penny, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Morbid studying death. But, no, it's not because... Studying near-death experiences has changed my life for the better, you know. It's given me a completely understand, different understanding of life as well, you know. And it's empowered me and it's made me live my life to the full as much as I can, you know. So it's been a great thing to study it as well. So, Yeah, could you tell us a bit, Penny, about how this even came about for you, the study of near-death experiences? Because as a registered nurse in intensive care, I mean, you, you have a very unique perspective, I would imagine, on witnessing people at, at that border edge of, of yeah. life, yeah, and death. Well, definitely. The reason I got into my work really was because of my uh, my job as a nurse. And, um, you know, when you work in intensive care, you see death so frequently. And, you know, you could see three or four deaths in just one shift. Um, but it was a particular connection I made with a patient who was dying that changed everything for me. You know, when I first started in intensive care, I thought, wow, this is great. I'm saving all these lives. And then it was a night shift and this man 
who had been in intensive care for about 14 weeks and he'd just been to the operating theatre. He'd come back to intensive care and I just continued on with the routine of settling him and giving him a wash for the night. And as I put the electric bed down flat to, to turn him to wash him, this poor man nearly jumped out of bed in agony and our eyes connected and it's like everything stopped around me and I, I felt like almost as if I'd swapped places with him and I could feel what he was going through and he was mouthing to me. He couldn't talk because he had bacchiostomy and he was mouthing, leave me alone, let me die, let me die in peace. And I thought, oh my gosh, and it made me stop everything I was doing. And so I called the doctor and he increased the painkiller he was on, but it didn't have any effect. And I was in a bit of a dilemma because I knew if I didn't turn this man and wash him, the nurse in charge would have reprimanded me. But if I did, it was going to cause him more distress. And so I, I pulled the screens around and all I could do really was sit with him and hold his hand. And then I just washed the parts of his body that I could reach. And I just you know, sat with him and it took about two or three hours before he settled down. But I couldn't stop thinking about him after that. And the following day, I couldn't sleep after my night shift. So I called back into work, I phoned in and I said, how's he doing? And they said, oh, he died about two hours after you left the, the unit. And so that really set me off on this depression. When I went into intensive care after that, I was looking around and I thought, these patients are dying patients. What am I doing? I'm, I'm not giving them any dignity at the end of their life. And I thought, what is death all about? You know, you... I, I just think I'd never thought about death at all, really. And I just thought, <laughs> isn't that funny <laughs> when you, when you see it that <laughs> often, wow. <laughs> mm. Never given any serious consideration at all, but I thought, you know, is, is death that bad that we've got to put our, the patients through this at the end of their life. And so I started reading about death and I came across, all different books on death, whatever I could get my hands on, I was reading. And that's when I came across near death experiences. And I thought, wow, this is different. People are saying that they, death is a, a wonderful experience. They go through this tunnel and they go through this towards a bright light and all of their pain disappears and they meet up with dead relatives. I thought, wow, that is a, that's a lovely thing to happen. Much better than that poor man, the indignity that he had in that hospital bed. And I think, because my nurse training was really scientific, it made me kind of think, oh, it's just some sort of hallucination. It's the brain as it's shutting down, you know. But I became more and more curious about it. And I just thought, well, I'm working in the ideal place to study these experiences. And I thought, I really want to do this. Now, I had no idea how I was going to study them and do, set up a research project. And then I happened to read a chapter in the book, in one book about death. And it talked about Professor Paul Badham, who ran a course on um, immortality and death and immortality at Lampeter University. So I thought that sounds really interesting. I'd love to do that course. And so I wrote to him and I thought, well, I won't tell him I'm completely obsessed with near death experiences because he'll think I'm a bit crazy. So um, I wrote off and I said, I work as a nurse and I'm really interested in your course. Could you give me further details? And it was about six weeks later, I received a letter because it was before emails in those days, you know, and I got this letter back from him and it said in the letter, give the details of the course. And it said, oh, if you would be interested in researching near death experiences, we may be able to find a way around the funding. I couldn't believe it. It was like, what? <laughs> so immediately i was on the phone i called him up and he said come and see me um we'll make an appointment come and see me we'll chat about it and uh, so within about two hours i was in sitting in his office discussing how i was going to go about this research project and as soon as i committed to it and knew i wanted to do it i was in that total state of flow and any obstacles that could have been there just completely dissolved and I was just in flow the whole time I was doing that research. It was such an incredible feeling. It was amazing. And, um, and it took five years to gather the data. And then it took another three years to analyze it and to write it up. And uh, the whole of those eight years, I was just in that total state of flow. Everything was just happening 
perfectly. It was amazing. It really was. How, so I found how my wonderfully life purpose affirmative. And then, mm, absolutely. It really was. And, you know, once you're on that path, you just can't get off and it takes over your life. It? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder, Penny, given, given the nurse that you were at the time when you first started having these, um, this curiosity, I guess, or you were with the man who aroused the curiosity a long time ago to where you are now and what you know and have experienced, is there anything that you would say particularly to those workers who are on the front lines, who have the same training and mindset that you had at that time? Yeah, I think it's extremely important to be open to these experiences, be aware of them, be able to recognize them. But the most important thing, if a patient was to um, talk about their experience, just bear in mind it's taken a lot of courage for them to bring it up and to share it with you. And the most important thing that you can do for them is to validate it for them and hear what they've got to say don't dismiss it. Don't say, oh, it was probably due to the drugs. That's, that's probably one of the worst things that you can say. What the best thing that you can say is, look, this is called a near-death experience. Other people have had these experiences. You're not alone. And there's lots of resources on the internet as well, you know. So direct them to further resources, but reassure them that they're not alone and to validate it for them. That is just crucial. Mm. Yeah, I... I agree with that completely. Yeah, my, my findings found the same thing that the number one, um, the number one thing that people really required and asked for was validation in terms of moving towards a healthy integration of their experiences. Yeah. Mm, and the the book penny what is um i mean there's so much in there and there's so many directions we could go but i guess what what are one of the one of the big takeaways that you would really want people to to walk away with um having read it and come across this book well just to see really and to realize that these experiences are literally life transforming and another good thing as well is that Kenneth Ring did some really amazing work back in the 1980s and he taught a course on near-death experiences and what he found is that his students were changed and transformed very much in the way that people who have an experience are simply through learning about near-death experiences. And I can validate that because I have undergone similar changes myself. Mm. And so, you know, have a look at these experiences, read about them and engage with them and engage with the message of what these people are saying. Because if you can start engaging with them, it can really transform your life for the better as well. And I think mm. that is key. I think these are such powerful experiences and they're potentially potentially world changing really imagine if everyone was able to engage with these experiences and really understand them because the, the underlying message of the near-death experience is the golden rule of that the heart of all of the wisdom traditions which is do unto others as you would want done unto yourself mm -hmm. and it's a very simple message and it's a very simple way of life and if we all treat others as we'd like to be treated ourselves the world would be very different oh it would it would yeah yeah uh, could you could you highlight for us penny some of the key um changes for the better that you have heard coming about from all of these hundreds of experiences you've come across well i think one of the biggest one is probably to be of service to mankind in many different ways um personal transformations um it can be all of a sudden, you know, they might have been very materialistic beforehand and very much into earning lots of money to buy the latest gadget or have the big flash car. All of a sudden, those things don't matter to them anymore, you know, and, mm -hmm. and people can downsize from having living in a big mansion to a moderate sized house. They could have really big cars and all of a sudden they just have something small, something that's environmentally friendly as well because they can change their attitude towards the environment and how 
they recognize how we're destroying our beautiful planet by the, the human impact and so it's about changing our attitudes and how we are on the planet as well and how we interact on an environmentally uh, friendly basis then as well um, and it's about more compassion and being more tolerant of other people and about love for other people and i think that probably is one of the biggest underlying factors is that deep intense unconditional love that these people connect with when they have these experiences you know and kelly for example she says during her experience she has never felt that love before and she said it's a love that is so great she couldn't even put it into words and she said it's beyond words but that experience taught her to love herself as well and that's something that she hadn't done before mm -hmm. and so that experience of being enveloped in that love taught her self-love which was and then she's she just exudes love you know when you're in her presence she's there she's just loving everyone as well and so it's a wonderful thing to experience that love and so I guess with these profound positive changes that happen with um, with NDEers um, and people who are, you know, around NDEers and also, you know, just other uh, spiritually transformative experiences notes, those positive changes can also bring about a whole heap of other disruptions. <laughs> <laughs> you know relationships get a bit wonky people might throw one lifestyle out and want to totally engage in, a, in another way of being so I guess again given the, the all of these stories that you've come across what do you hear there as the themes of the greatest challenges that experiences go through I think um, a lot of them <coughs> is relationships as you said there's a real big um, high divorce rate after these experiences and that is simply because they are no longer they no longer have anything in common with their loved ones anymore you know they with their spouse um so there can be many breakups sometimes they can be amic very amicable they can remain best friends but they realize they just can no longer live together as as a couple um also with their careers as well you know sometimes they realize that they, <clears throat> their career choices are no longer aligned with their belief system and they really don't feel that the job that they're doing is in the best interest of other people and so they might have that conflict as well so they might resign and leave a perfectly good job that is very well paid and just leave their job you know and they might do volunteer work they may retrain, become nurses, and in, in the caring profession as well. So, um, yeah, there's lots of disruptions. Let me think of other ones. Um, it can be really isolating for people, you know. They feel totally isolated because no one understands them anymore. Their friends don't get them, and it can be really isolating. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that, that sense of... Um well i've i've changed my relationships i'm alone i've changed from doing x to y in my life people probably think i'm crazy now um because i'm yeah. behaving quite differently as well and even even questioning oneself to say i don't know am i a bit crazy and because so much in in the mind and way of being has changed yeah. yes absolutely and i remember vividly speaking with Shishi when for the first time after she got back in touch with me and she said you know I, I feel almost as if I'm a burden on my family because I keep mm. talking about my experience so much and and they try to understand it but and I'm, I'm just wanting to talk about it all the time and I feel like they're being polite now because I just talk about it all the time you know mm. so I think it's crucial to have those people around you who can understand what you're going through as well you know so Penny, what would you say to the to the Gigi's of the world who just want to talk about it and their experiences are just so always there at, at the tip of their mouth and yet are finding it's a bit tricky to to do that right now? Well, there are people out there who you can chat with, you know, there are support groups as well. And there are some online forums as well, you know, so connect in with those online forums, you'll find 
people who are going through exactly the same as you and depending on where you are in the world there might even be a, a support group where you can go and chat with people as well you can physically meet them and you know meet up for a cup of coffee or something so there are some groups in the UK and there are some quite a lot in the USA as well you know mm -hmm. the International mm -hmm. Association of near Death Studies they've got many different support groups so have a look online and see what's available in your area because once you connect with people who are going through similar things that again can help in a great way as well absolutely yeah i've been working with ians to actually we're doing online global groups now so to help the outreach for experiences so that we don't have to be bound by location anymore um you can you can work on time zone <laughs> yeah right yes absolutely yeah. oh i'd be interested to know more about that maybe we could connect and i can feed oh. people you know let people know about that as well fabulous fabulous well um and on the on the bottom of this recording i'll make sure that resource and link is available for people as well to to get connected to it's uh we've been having fun with it so far yeah <laughs> I guess the final question that, that comes with all this, Penny, is, you know, so these people are having these experiences, they're getting in touch with something other than the regular day to day um, on this, um, as it was described in the book, this three dimensional way of being on the planet. I, and it's the big why question, you know, um, what do you think is really going on you know as as more and more of these experiences come to the fore yeah i think what's happening is that the more people share the experience the more other people are being educated about the experience as well mm -hmm. and i think it's all having that knock-on effect of raising everyone's consciousness and that that's the only that's the biggest thing that i see it's happening now in we're all going through that shift in our consciousness and we're going through big positive changes you know i see really big positive changes going on and i do see connections with some mental health conditions as well whereas i think this is a disconnect of our spiritual spirituality you know we've lived in this materialist paradigm which has kind of denied our spiritual aspects of life and I think certain some mental health conditions are just people connecting with their spirituality. And sometimes it can be very overwhelming for them. And this is what's happening now is that we're beginning to recognize that. So we're going through this global awakening and we're all awakening as a species. And it's a really exciting time. It's, it's why I really love and value voices like yours that are coming forward now who come from a medical understanding and training. And there's this this ability to stand in two worlds, if you will, um, and help communicate that in a way to say, well, actually, they can work together. Um, they're not; they don't have to be separate ways of being. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Is there anything, Penny, that you would anything more that uh, that wants to come forward from you that you wanna you wanna add or share to other experiences out there? Um, I can't think of anything outstanding. I think we covered pretty much everything, really. Um, although there's so much I could talk about this this subject all day long, you know. It's <laughs> nice. but, but uh, no, and um, it would be great to connect with you and to have a chat with you about your work in the future as well. So if I could do a recording of that, that would be great. I'd be my pleasure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One. <laughs> so important to collaborate with other people doing similar work because I think again that is going to strengthen the work that we do as well yep I, I could not agree more mm -hmm. yeah yeah well thank you Penny um, so in the link we'll put in details to the book uh, we'll put in the foundation as well uh, love care share foundation uh, so that people can get a sense as well of, of what's going on there and where all of the uh, proceeds from the book mm -hmm. will go towards yeah and uh, of course you can let me know anything other anything else that needs to be in there so it has been such a pleasure thank you so much for your time and carry on with the fabulous work uh, there's there's much more going on so we'll stay yep. tuned to hear me the next too. great okay. <laughs> thank you